How can we join two tables together and get a running total? Hello, I'm Philip Burton of idodata.com. In the previous video, we created these two tables, incoming and outgoing, and we have certain amounts on certain dates. And what we did was we used a union to join them together, and then we grouped them together to have one per date transaction, and then we did a running total. However, is there another way rather than using a union? Can we use a join instead? And the answer is yes, we can. So let's just unwind all of this. So we just go back to a simpler version of the data and we just have a reminder of what the data is that we have got. So we've got these two tables, incoming and outgoing. And the incoming has January and February with $50 and $100, and February and March is the outgoing, so negative figures, 30 and 25. So I want these to be in the one table, and I can do this using a join. So if I say select star from, and I will have the incoming, which I will alias as I, just to make it shorter, and I will do a join. Now, what sort of join should I do? Well, let's just type the word join to start with. Now, first of all, I need an on. I need to say what they're going to be joined on. What is the common column? The common column is not going to be the amount because just because I have $50 going in and $50 going out, that isn't the same unifier. Instead, it's the date. So if I have a February date, I want to have any information from February there, the same date 1st of February. So I'm going to say on I dot date transaction equals all dot date transaction. So let's just have a look and see what we've got. And we've only got one row, February. And the reason for this is because this is an inner join. If I don't specify what it is, it's an inner join. So we'll only do a comparison where both rows have the same figures, in this case, February. So because January is not contained in the second table, that is excluded, and similarly for March. Now a left join would give me everything from the first table incoming, and only those which match in the second table outgoing, which is good for January, but not so good for March because there isn't a March in the incoming. So what I need to do is instead of using a left join or a right join, which does the same thing, except in the second table, or instead of using an inner join, I need to use a full join. So a full join takes all of the rows, regardless of whether they matched in the first table, the second table or not. So let's have a look at the output. And we can see here we have our first table with January and February and our second table with February and March. And we have nulls where it doesn't have a common value. So I need a single column which has the date transaction. So I could say if or case the date transaction is null, then give me the second date transaction. However, there is a much easier way of doing this. And this is using the function code is null. This is one word and it takes two arguments. So the first argument is, okay, I want this column, I dot date transaction. And if that happens to be null, then I want this column, which is or dot date transaction. So this is my date transaction. In addition, I want the incoming amount. So I will say amount, and I've got to specify which table because there are two amounts. I dot amount as incoming amount and all dot amount as outgoing amount. So if I run this, then we can see that we have one date transaction column. So if it was null in the first table, it gives me it from the second table. And we have incoming amounts and outgoing amounts. So what's the balance for today? So what's the incoming minus outgoing? Do you think that would work? Do I put I dot amount or do I put incoming amount? Do I use the alias or not? 
The answer is in the select clause, I've got to use the original. I can't use any aliases. So I can only use aliases in the order by or if I've used a CTE and this is a second part of the query. So this is balance today. And let's see if it works. And we can see it works where we've got information on both sides, but not where we don't have information on both sides. We just get a null because 50 minus null, well, null is the unknown. So 50 minus I don't know equals I don't know. So what I need to do is again put an is null around it. So if this amount is null, then give me zero. And the same for the outgoing. So let's have a look at this. So we now have our balance, 50, 70, and minus 25. Now, does this actually work well? And the answer is, well, it works, but not brilliantly. Let's see what I mean. Let's insert an additional value into this incoming, and I'm going to insert it on exactly the same date, just like we did in the previous video. So if I run this now, you'll see that we have got two amounts in February, but just one amount in the incoming table, but just one amount in the outgoing table. So 150 incoming in February, 30 outgoing. So let's have a look and see if this works. And you can see that we have a bit of a problem. We have got two amounts of 30. So if I was just to total them up, and you can see we can do this in the balance today, we would have 30 too much in the outgoing amount. So what I need to do is to just do a little bit of manipulation with incoming. So select star from incoming is what we currently have. But I just want one row per date. So I now say date transaction. And the sum of the amount as the amount and then a group by. So I'm grouping by date transaction. So that summarizes this into just one row for February. Okay, so how do we introduce this into this query? And the answer is we just replace incoming with this select query in brackets. So let's just put brackets and put that in. And now we can see it works. So instead of having just every single row, we've got every single calculation per date. And I will do exactly the same thing for outgoing. So let's just change this to outgoing. So I don't need to do anything else because it is already aliased. So the incoming is aliased as I, the outgoing is aliased as O. So the final thing is we need a running total. And just like in the previous video, we just create a CTE for this. So with my table as with any CTE, we need to make sure that the previous statement has a semicolon at the end. So let's just open the brackets and close the brackets and then say select star from my table. So that should do exactly nothing except it gives us this as a CTE, which allows me to then go and use balance today. And I can say sum of balance today. And exactly like last time, I put in the over and I order by date transaction. And I say as running total. So if I run this, then that gives me the same running total that we had in the previous video or would do if we had exactly the same amounts. So you can see that we've got a separate way of doing this. In the previous video, we had a look at union or union all the tables together. Here is another way, a full join. So which should you use? Well, it's a bit tricky. Union, it's got a certain amount of simplicity, but you need to make sure that the columns have got the same meaning. So we had to put in nulls, for instance, when we were doing the union. Here with the full join, I'm taking the incoming and outcoming amounts, but I could be taking other things as well. I could be taking in additional columns. So what you need to use 
could vary for your personal circumstances, the context of why you're doing this. Now, if you'd like more information on any of this, then I hope you'll have a look at my Udemy course on querying Microsoft SQL Server with TSQL. So for instance, we have a look at the select statement, including joins, and then further on, we have a look at union and union all, window functions, including the over, and CTEs using the with statement. A link to this course is included in the description to this video. Well, thank you very much for watching this. If you liked it, then please click the like, and why not click the subscribe and the bell? That way you'll be notified of any new videos. Thank you very much for watching this, and keep learning.